three, two, one, go. Good morning. This is the picking platform for Medford Pear Orchard. A little bit of introduction about the machine. We have the front of the machine where the bins are picked up. Since on the platform where they're filled up, they're moved back toward the back where they're, the full bins are lowered onto the ground. So, as we progress through this demonstration, we'll talk about all the safety features and the power features. The first thing I guess I need to talk about is the way the bins go onto the platform. bins have cross pieces, and that's the way it goes on to the platform this way. This is the widest aspect of the bin. If you put the bin on the other way, when it goes on to the chains to drive it and carry it through the machine, it won't fit. It drops down in the middle. So this is the way it has to go on the machine. And this is where it's loaded. It's loaded like this on the front. Whether the machine is moving or not, that's the way the bins go on. On both sides of the front, there's a red safety switch. If you push these switch, either one of these switches, the motor stops. You have to rotate it, and they pop back out so you can get it started again. That's the safest thing. And typically what happens when people are getting off, they will ha mistakenly bump that with their hand as they're turning around or with their bucket. And the machine stops and it won't start. It'll crank, but it won't start. Back here we have a power converter. And this turns on lights for early morning picking. If you come out in the morning to pick, those lights will be on because I will have fueled it up, check the oil, the coolant, and all those things so that light will be on. In the after and you turn it off when the sun comes up. In the afternoon when the sun is setting in the west, the people facing west can't see the pears. They can see fine on this side but not this side. So you turn the lights on again and these people will be able to see the pears and continue picking. Now, the sound of this machine here sounds like an engine boiling. So if you hear that, that means this is on. I don't know if you can hear it on the machine or not. Okay, the next thing we want to do is mount onto the picking platform. John, you want to come get on here and we'll go through the next phase what we have. We probably need to stop right here. Two, one. Okay, now we're going to put on the harnesses. And we're actually, the drivers, there's two drivers, one in the front, one in the back, are actually going to put the harnesses on the people until they know how to do it. And the way this is done is this is the back up. So we're going to turn the harness like this, and we're going to have the people put, John, put your right foot through there, lift it up a little bit, then put your left foot through the other loop. I'm going to pull the shoulder straps up and put them over either side. At this point now we can pull the straps. Now watch now when you want to loosen it. How do you loosen it, John? You pull that back and you can loosen it when you take it off. But you get both of these fairly snug on the bottom. Up on the top you can, if it's too big for you, you can pull this up to make it shorter. And then this is the buckle that goes across and it goes in like a button. And then you can pull it a little bit snug. Now this harness you, is not a picking harness. It's a safety harness. It's an OSHA requirement. If John should walk over to the side here and should fall off, 
until it really goes fast, it won't do anything. So if he's just leaning out into the tree and falls into the tree, he won't go fast enough and he will just tumble down to the ground. So this is a safety requirement. Just like your seat belt doesn't catch until it snaps. Okay. We have two different harnesses, so now we're going to put on the other harness. So hang on, we're going to take this one off. Or you can just take the picture of him taking it off. I didn't <clears throat> I didn't know whether to point out that if women should sign up for we're recording picking on the platform. Okay. This may be an uncomfortable position for them. So that's may that may be a consideration that you have to just leave think this about. Because this doesn't move up or down. They might have to leave it looser. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Okay. I know that when I've seen men on or women on it in the past, I was a little embarrassed for them. <laughs> Just like I might be a little embarrassed <laughs> having it around, around my legs. So, reverse. It's easy to, if you just do that much, take it off, it comes off easy. You ready? Yeah, we're still going. Oh, we're still going. Okay, this is the second harness. The shoulder pads are on the top, and on this one here, the belt buckles or the belts are hanging down. We just walk into it, pull the belts through the center, and put it through the buckle. Okay, <laughs> On all of these, when you're helping them put them on, make sure that the straps are not twisted because that'll just chaff and, and hurt. And so basically that's the second one. Now if, if you don't dress the pickers, <clears throat> it's going to take you 45 minutes for everybody to get their harnesses on. It's a big mess. You can help them get their harnesses on and they will be ready to go in about 10 minutes. All members will be ready to pick. In 45 minutes, we've lost about three bins of pairs being picked just from putting the harnesses on. So we want to, the driver puts up, help four people put on, the other second driver, which will be working in the back left hand corner, will be helping those three put their harnesses on. And when it's time to take them off, just kind of monitor to see if they can take them off all right. Okay. For this one, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and finish putting the shoulder straps on before you worry about this. Otherwise, yeah. they're hanging loose. Yeah. That one felt a little bit short this, for me. This one, incidentally, is the best strap when you have big people. This is better than this one. This is better for smaller people. Women like this one. Some of the big men really have to have this one. Okay, you want to turn it off? Two, one, go. Okay, this is the control plat tower here. Our where we control the front wheels with the steering wheel and buttons for the rear wheels. This is a four-wheel drive. We have a, it's called a transmission, we have a forward and reverse. When we advance it forward, we're going forward. When we go in reverse, we go in reverse. We have our throttle control. And typically we will have the throttle somewhere between the R's and the T's here, unless we're going a long distance down the road. 
We have here, we have on the controls, we have a compressor switch which we won't be involved with. That's used for pruning and such as that. Have a parking brake which is on at the moment, off to the right. We'll write that a little bit brighter for us here. We have then a pump switch. It says off to start, so we want this down to start so we're not starting the engine against the load of the pump. We have a row finder which we don't use, so this will be on the center position. We have auto steer, steer which is in, uh, incorporated with this, and it's also just left in this position. Then we have three buttons. We have a left, we have a right, and return to center. If this button is tall, when you let go of the button, the rear wheels go straight again. If the button is down, it will stay wherever you put it. Left means the rear end will move to the left. Right means the rear end will move to the right. Uh, this enables us then if we if we hit the left button and turn the wheel so the rear end's going to the left and we turn this to the left we can crab into the row or out of the row. We can move sideways essentially and that's what this is for. Or when we come to the end of the row, if we put it on right and turn to the left, this will pivot on the center of the machine. We just have to watch the real long tail and the real long front from running into trees, cars, culverts, rocks, or even going into the canal because it will be moving backwards. Down here we have an hour meter. We have lights to control it. And now we're going to, well, let's see, one more thing we have. We have an up and a down for the control for the bin on the front to bring it up so we can get it to the picking level. So we go back to the start position. All When we turn it to the first position, all the lights will light up. They go out. But this is the glow plug, the yellow light. And we leave it on and don't try to start it till the light goes out, which you just did. Looks like somebody pushed the emergency button. So what happens when someone pushes the emergency button? What should someone do? It won't start. Okay, so depress the emergency button? This button was pushed. That's what happens when the emergency button is pushed. It wouldn't start. At this point, with the motor running, with the pump off, it will still go forward. This pump here is for all of the other controls, like the platform out and the things we'll talk about shortly. You hear the pump turn on? Now it turned off. Now it's on. We want to turn the pump off whenever we start it or whenever we stop it. Okay, we're going to stop now and reposition and then we'll continue going.